I forgot to turn off the music. But it's fine. Next up, Night Hunt. Warhammer Age of Sigmar faction focus, Night Hunt. Now this is another faction like Cities of Sigmar that I was, um, I'm very interested to see on this one. Because in my summation, uh, according to me, opinions my own, they've tried a lot of stuff with Night Hunt, and uh, it, to me it has never felt right. They're like Slanesh, an army that changes a lot from edition to edition, but it never feels like they quite get it right from a gameplay and mechanical perspective. So I'm inter interested to see what they're going to do with this one. Um, Mr. Woe, can you please comment on your feelings about the Squigs not able to take an objective ever? You desire to hear you laugh at it. What do you mean? I mean, their control score is one, right? So they could. They could take an objective. If you, if you like, charge in, you kill all the opponents, and then you're standing on the objective, your control score is one, and it can't get higher. But you, you got that, right? You got that one. I don't know. Is there something I, I'm not knowing about that? Am I missing a, a rules question or something? Did I miss like a paragraph that says they can't or dwarf bias against squigs? One guy. All right. Is there that they can't take from anyone you wanted comments on? So in my opinion, or in my experience, the way you take objectives from your opponent is murdering everyone on that objective, and then it's yours. Um, I suppose they can't, like, steal an objective and stand on it with more guys or something like that, but what a cowardly way to take an objective. Who would do that with ten capture stone horns almost every game? Who would do something like that? Can't hold an objective if you're dead. Anyway, the Spectral Host. For many in the mortal realms, death is a cold and unknowable terror. Waiting for the moment it can cut their lives abruptly short. Those enlightened by the true nature of mortality know better. For even as the body rots, the spirit is free to serve the undying king's every whim and the wrathful geists of the guilty, the sinful, and the damned gather into his spectral vanguard, known as the Night Hound. They are warped wraiths, molded in the image of their mortal sins, for Nagash is a strong believer that punishments should fit the crimes. He deems a soul to have committed, with no trial. It helps that the many violent and traumatic ways one can die in the mortal realms produce particularly vicious phantoms for his armies, and they all share a bitter hatred for the living. Even now, as the deadly necro quake that saw the night haunt ravage the realms recedes into memory with the coming of the vermin doom, the howling specters at death's command still rise from Shayosh to drag mortals to their untimely fates. Those who fight back to discover their corporeal weapons find no purchase against these ghostly forms, and even those lucky enough to fend off an attack Learn the unforgiving truth. Death comes for us all. Um, Geheists have haunted burial sites and sepultures since before the Age of Chaos. But it wasn't until Nagash's dark ambition unleashed the shyish Nadir that their great processions began to sweep across the realms on winds of deathly amethyst magic. In concentrating the magical energy of the realm of death, into its sentry, the great necromancer caused unchecked death magic to sweep across the other realms, and entire hosts of shades rose up to spread their master's dominion over the mortal world. Though the night haunt attacked in discordant waves more akin to a force of nature than an invading army, 
The rise of two great leaders formed them into a unified fighting force with organization, structure, and purpose. Lady Olindir is the undoubted master of the Night Hunt, bestowed the title of Mortark of Grief by Nagash, and tasked with afflicting the mortal world with endless misery and sorrow, while her consort, Kurdas Valentian, plans the tactical aspects of their assaults. The Night Hunt now fight with discipline and strategy, led by their lieges, or their subordinate Knights of Shrouds. The particular character of a leader lends each host a distinct personality. Rage-filled spirits charge recklessly into melee, while more patient commanders might prefer devious traps or complex gambits. Uh -huh. Such is the drip of Nagash. Dude, look at him. There she is. Keeping him on a tight leash. Taking him for a walk, right? Spirits are influenced by the realms they rise from. The Quicksilver dead possess bodies of liquid metal, shaped by the magic of Chaimon. T-1000. Others are born from the wars that rack the mortal realms, where blood-soaked battlefields and endless... Unrepentant murder gives rise to the Scarlet Duum, who claw their way through pools of blood to extract the toll of vengeance from the living. Alright. Battle traits. Uh, we are still ethereal, which we knew. Ignore all modifiers to save rolls, pause, and neg. For friendly night haunt units, excluding Nagash. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um... All-out defense is a lot more costly now, and it's... There was a time where this thing was almost a downside. Actually. I think we're fine in this edition. This is just great in this edition. You got plenty of other stuff to spend your command points on at this point. Reaction. Opponent declared an attack for one. Oh, discorporate. Five aboard. Okay, this is your... In exchange for not being able to use all-out defense... You can get a 5-up ward, which is better anyway. Now, you probably have a 6-up ward just to start with, right? But still. Nice. You can custom little thing just in case. Cool. Once per turn army, your charge phase. Shriek. Big friendly night haunt unit that is not used in Aura of Dread. Okay, so we got Aura of Dread, Aura of Dread. We got... Um... Everybody has an Aura of Dread, although there's one extra ability here that isn't Aura of Dread. So, a big friendly Night Hunt unit that has not used an Aura of Dread and that charged this turn to use his ability, then pick an enemy unit within one. Number of models in the friendly Night Hunt unit must be greater than the models. Okay, so you have to outnumber them and you have to have charged. And it is specifically your charge phase up here. So no doing it on the opponent turn. Um, minus one from hit rolls for the target attacks. For the rest of the... But only the turn. Okay. So you charge them. You do all your attacks. And then they are at minus one to hit you. Unless they're dead. Your turn only. No rolling, it just works. Alright. Yeah, you don't really get clapped back a lot on your turn. Or at least, that's not how you draw it up. How you draw it up is on your turn, you charge something, and it's fucking dead, right? Eh. I don't know. This thing... I'm giving it... Meh... Meh out of ten. I suppose this is going to allow you to enter a bunch of combats, right? So you charge this unit, you charge this one, and this one on your turn. And then you kill the one over here, and then these two are at minus one, so maybe maybe this is like supporting a multi-charge strategy. Like you can do two combats now, and you're more safe, I suppose. Um, Wave of Terror. 
once per turn army your charge phase. Friendly Night Hunt units that are in combat can use charge abilities in this phase. However, if a unit that is in combat uses a charge ability and the charge roll is three or less, it does not count as having charged. Ooh. You can charge in combat already. Nice. Oh lord. I have seen what you have done for Night Hunt, and I want that for Beast Claw as well. Imagine just rolling impact hits every turn oh i'm in combat impact in combat impact Oof. Ooh, pardon almost charged in combat there hold up all right um this is sick this is a sick ability Once per turn, army your charge phase. And this is another aura of dread. So this is stun. So shriek is minus one to hit rolls. Stun is minus one from save rolls. We're safe on Big. Okay. Uh, plus one rend, essentially. What are the pick a friendly night haunt war machine? That's got to be the black coach, right? Or cavalry unit. All right, that's... Uh, this one is anything here. Any Night Hunt. This one, War Machine or Cav. Um, I like seeing minus one from save rolls. The plus one rend, big. This one's good. Dude. Absolute copium. Please. Can the coach be good? Can we play with the black coach? This edition, please. So let's see, what are the cavalry units in your army? Hex Wraiths, Black Coach is a war machine. Um, most of your heroes probably have the cavalry here uh, keyword because they're on the horses. Rykonor, right? Like Rykonor, Boat Guy, Knight of Shrouds, stuff like that. Okay, so most of your heroes get plus one rend. Black Coach does, and then Hacks Wraiths. Oh, possibly Boat Guy. Cool. Great. So this shit is great. Ethereal is great. This is great. This is like okay. This is okay. And then once per turn, your charge phase Petrify. Uh, big friendly night haunt hero that has not used an aura of dread. Okay, so hero. Okay. Um, target has strike last. Uh, another multi combat kind of thing. Because this is one turn only, right? So, strike last stuff only really good for multi combats for the most part. Um, but uh, hero plus other guys in just works automatic, right? You don't have to roll a 10 up. Uh -huh. So ethereal is great. Wave of terror is great. Stun is great. Petrify is alright. Shriek is alright. Discorporate's good. Alright. Nothing to sneeze at. These are good. Battle formations. Oh, it's the lock and key men. These guys are funny looking. I like them. Death stalkers. There is no escape. Friendly night haunt units can use charge abilities even if they use to run or retreat. Oh, retreat and charge? Ooh. Oh. So you can run and charge, you can retreat and charge. In addition, wait, uh, can you even if, okay. In addition, no mortal damage is inflicted on friendly night haunt units by retreat abilities. I always forget this. This is so weird. Why did they mortal damage retreat? No one ever retreats in this game. Except me. A 
if you can already just charge in combat, then retreat and charge isn't like the most important. I mean, it's still good. Run and charge is the good part. Anyway, this shit is good. You're going to do a lot of charging, a lot of retreating, a lot of tactical stuff. I sure hope you have some damage this edition, because that was the thing you've always missed. Yeah, and just passive. No rolling. That was like the really nice thing to see here. It was just like, oh, I rolled a random charge roll. Let me consult a table to see how much fun I'm allowed to have. It just Everything just works. Yeah, for jumping over screens, you get stuck on things like that. I mean, you do fly, so you can wisp through it regardless. But no, this is good. Um, Clark Specter, thanks for the first time chat. Would you recommend Night Haunt to a new AOS or Wargame player? Sure. I'd recommend basically any army to a new AOS or Wargame player. Um, there are models that were released for Age of Sigmar. It's a faction that's going to stick around forever. Um, yeah. You're jumping into AOS, this next edition just found the game and your channel, nice. Yeah, if you're concerned when you say recommend it to a new player, to me that reads, is this army too complicated to play as a new player? And I would mostly alleviate your fears. It's not really that complicated of a game. Right now it kind of is because we're looking at preview rules for a fourth edition that we haven't seen everything for yet but in general age of sigmar isn't like the most complicated game ever you play five games of age of sigmar and you're about as caught up as the average player is um once you start remembering all your army's rules it's like fine um what you really do want is to have an army with a good skill ceiling to it because i think the problem with a lot of like new player armies is they're really easy to learn, but then there's nowhere to go from there, and it's just like boring and you're playing with Lincoln Logs. You want you want the ability of your army to grow with you as you get better and reward you for better play, you know, later on. So anyway, yeah, I I think they're fine. They'd be they'd be fine to play. Difficulty wise or something like that. What armies have high skill ceilings? Historically speaking, um, corn, mm, KO maybe until you figure out the flowchart. Um, any army that is supposed to be for new players and so you just don't have any options. And the fewer options you have, the more crippling your mistakes are, if that makes sense. Lumineth just because because Lumineth just because there's a shitload of stuff to remember. Um Sylvaneth, I think I would say. Yeah. And those are just like the special versions, I guess. The most the most complicated armies, I guess, to learn. Do you think Scrag still gets to move the moon the moon zone? Uh yeah, he does. we we read that earlier. He has the he has the ability where he can uh once a game he can choose to keep the moon here or move it. He still has that. Thanks for the help. Looking forward to get him on the table. Hey, don't worry about it, but also don't rush. Uh take your time. It's a hobby, right? Like, you got painting and assembling and everything. Um, no need to rush. Or feel like you're wasting your time or something like that. Um, my advice usually to people is... A lot of times, like, you're a new player and you're building up your 2k army and you're kind of closing in on finishing it. But then, there's some tournament that or an event that's happening in two weeks. 
And like, oh, I want to go to that event. And then you like rush to finish the last stuff and you're like painting in the hotel room. And then it looks kind of like bad and you were under a lot of stress. Just take your time. There'll be plenty of events and everything like that. Ahem. Lore of the Underworlds. Six Shade Mist. Pick a friendly Night Hunt unit that has three or more models and is holier than 12. Strike one from wound rolls for attacks that target that unit. Unlimited. Great. Okay. Easy to cast. Six. Minus one to be wounded as long as it's a squad of three or more. Unlimited. Great. Extra durability for the Night Hunt army. Nice. Here she is, Lady Olinder. Hold up. I'm cheating. Rykonor, Dreadblade, Mirmorn. Black Coach, please. No. All right. We we won't know. We won't know if the Black Coach is good. They're saving it for later. Okay. Lady Olinder. Seven health, four up save. Still tiny. Still tiny hero. Uh, four up ward, though. Big ward. Horrifying Visage. 12 inch range, one attack, twos and twos, 3d6. Okay. Crit auto wood. One attack, twos and twos, ren three, damage d6, huh? Random. They have a Midnight, 4 attacks, 4s and 3s, 1d3 crits, 6, 4s and 4s, 01. Auto wounds, everything auto wounds. Okay. No rest for the Wicked. Pick any number of friendly Night Hunt units on the battlefield to be the targets. For each target you can return a number of slain models. 3 plus D3. Okay. Once per battle, you are hero phase. Pick any number of friendly night haunt on the entire table, and 3 plus D3 regen them. That's good. Alright, that's kind of good. Passive. Minus 3 from the control scores of enemy units while they're within 12. Ooh, hold on. If they allow that to go to zero, which I don't see why it wouldn't, unless there's a core rule somewhere that says minimum one, right? This is kind of cool. Now it's not control characteristic, it's control score. But still, you could get in positions where your opponent's control score becomes zero here. Kind of cool. I don't know if that's legal yet, but kind of cool. Does minus two flip the objective back? Who knows? Probably not. Yeah, squig mob negative two in the presence. And then grief stricken class six, 18. Ignore positive modifiers to hit and wound and save for the target for the rest of the turn. Okay. So it, it's not a debuff. Well, I guess it is a debuff in that it exactly D's your buff. Yeah, my assumption is that it just goes to zero. I agree. Is it? This is kind of cool. It's not something I'd use all the time. But this is something I'd use all the time, so all right. Well, let's see what she costs. You were joking, it definitely doesn't go negatives. I assume so, yeah. It doesn't turn off the anti-keyword. Yeah, because anti-keyword is rend, and that's the only thing that this thing doesn't stop, is bonus rend. However, you don't care about bonus rend, because you are ethereal. Um, it's 
it doesn't stop bonus damage. So it stops positive modifiers to hit, wound, save, but not damage. So if you get, like, anti-monster plus one damage, it ignores, you know, it doesn't ignore that. You do ignore bonus rend, because you just don't care about rend, and also attack characteristics as well. Night Haunt is the anti-anti army, yeah. Raikonor the Grim Hailer. This guy looks cool, by the way. A lot of Night Haunt heroes look cool. 7 health, 4 up save, 12 inch move, big mover. 6 up ward, cavalry and wizard. He's cavalry, so he gets the bonus rend when he charges. Uh, 5 attacks, 3s and 3s, rend maybe 3. Damage 2, well, damage 3 on the charge, crit auto wound. And then the hooves and teeth and stuff. So if you charge and do the thing, he has five attacks, threes and threes, rend three, damage three, and crits auto wound. All right, he's kind of a slapper. Corpse candles. Declare, either pick this unit or an enemy one. Allocate one damage point to the target. If you picked an enemy, add one to casting rolls. If you pick this unit, add one to casting rolls and add one to its powerless. So he becomes a double caster if you damage himself. Cool. 12 inches is down from 14, yeah. I've seen, in general, a slight downtick in movement speeds. Just a little bit here and there. Yeah, or a double unbindy, or a one of each, right? Um, your hero, Faze, seven. Uh, enemy within 12, inflict D3 mortal damage. If any models are slain, inflict an additional D3 mortal damage. Nice. I like this spell. I remember this one. This is a fun spell. As long as you're fighting one or two wound, uh, sorry. As long as you're fighting one or two health enemies, it's like 2d3 down. That's sick. Good spell. Grim Justice. Add one to hit rolls and wound rolls for attacks made with this unit's Fell Reaper. If the target is a priest or a wizard, priests and wizards hate him. Find this one passive trick. Dude, Raikonor is looking kind of cool. I like this guy. He has a highly good weapon. Um, a funny ability, a good spell, a randomly decent passive, counts as cavalry, ward six, hey, all right, and he looks cool. Dreadblood a heroes. Three health, 12 move, four up save. This guy's essentially like a mini Raikonor, right? Curse of Loyalty. If this unit charged, add three to the control scores of friendly Night Haunt units while they're holier than 12 of this unit. Okay. Including itself. Phantasmal Discorporation. It's a two-man unit now? Okay. Yeah, it used to be a one guy. Remove this unit from the battlefield. Yeah, it still has teleport. Okay. Ward 6. Okay, so it's a two-man unit. Um, double mini Raikonors. They boost control scores when they charge and they can teleport, huh? And kind of importantly, any movement phase. Any movement phase teleport, huh? Kind of nice with it. Does Night Hunt still have the best horses model wise? Um, it's too different. Now you have to have a conversation about it. The existence of hex wraiths brings the water level of Night Hunt down from embarrassment. Um, the good horse models in Night Hunt are really cool. Some of them are even very, very cool. 
but Slaves to Darkness, to me, crushes it. The new Cities of Sigmar, like, hero guy kind of crushes it. There's, there's some really cool horses now. But their styles are pretty different, obviously, so it's hard to compare. Slaves always winning. Frank was at a Nurgle horse. Yeah, that shit's sick. Nearmorn Banshees, huh? Two health, four up save. Eight inch move. Two, four, three, two, D3. Okay, almost no attacks. And kind of goofo, but Ren 2 damage D3. Crit auto wound. Two health, four up. These are weird. These are weird. Reaction opponent declared a spell. You can spell Ida. I'm still in a dream. If a friendly night hunting unit holier than 12 was picked to be the target of that spell. This is a reaction to opponent declares a spell. If a friendly night hunt unit holier than 12 was picked to be the target, this unit can unbind. Add one to the unbinding roll. If the spell is unbound, it deals D3. But. If a friendly night haunt unit was not picked to be the target of the spell and they're just buffing themselves, this whole thing doesn't work, right? So, eh. Eh. All right. I don't know if I like these or not. Maybe in fourth, you're more often going to be the target of your opponent's spells. But I have found it to be the case that the best spells in the entire game are ones that do not target the opponent, but in fact target your own guys for like a buff or something. I don't know. I don't know if I like them. We'll have to see how things shake out. Anyway, look at how great everything looks. And the the big scythe in the background. How far back do I have to look to find a hex ray? They're just not even on the page. Yeah, they should retire those. These dudes, they all look sick. Anyway, looks great. Oh, Jimbo, what do you say? The army has a lot of access to debuff abilities, which can severely neuter their enemies' combat prowess, like Dread Scythe Herodans, who lower wound rolls against them when charging into the fray. This keeps their somewhat fragile units intact and charging often, something the army wants to do at every opportunity. Some units have had fairly significant tweaks, like the Dread Blade Harrows, who now come as a unit rather than an individual hero. Phantasmal Discorporation ability still allows them to be almost anywhere on the battlefield when you need them most. Which is especially useful now that their Curse of Loyalty ability boosts the control scores of nearby Night Haunt after a charge. Yeah, so you teleport them into the position and then try to charge to get the bonus. Even if it is a 9. And then Spearhead Spotlight. Slasher Host. <laughs> Slasher Host. I know why Doc was banned. <laughs> Pick friendly unit, use his ability of the charge, and the charge roll is 10 up. Target has strike last. Okay, we have found... We have found some things that are not better in Spearhead, rules-wise. Play the slot machine. If you win the bingo, you get something. Okay. And then they have Ethereal. Whoa, they have Ethereal? And the Knight of Shrewds, not on a mount, but on the on foot. Fight Axe version 3 is 1 2, crit auto wound. Pick friendly unit holy than 9 of this until the start of next turn, target is ward 5 up. Good. Okay. Just a good guy. You have 35 hex rays and you have. 
and you have no taste in models. Look, hexed wraiths have a good ability, I recall. I recall them being good in third. They had the bodyguard thing right. And then before that in second, their roles were completely different, but still good. Overall night hunt. Um, I'm going to give them a 5 out of 7. This is looking good, actually. Battle traits are looking good. Lore looking good. Deathstalker is looking good. Lady Olinder, no rest for the wicked is powerful. I don't know how this thing is going to work out. Grief stricken is kind of whatever. But she's a double caster, which is really good in this edition. The jump from one wizard to two wizard is so big, I think, in this edition. So that you can cast and unbind. We'll have to see. Haven't played yet. Yeah, unbinds will be a lot rarer for sure. He touched on this a bit ago. Night Haunt Slanesh getting changes, but nothing sticking. Which armies do you think need the biggest help? Less from a balance perspective, but from a varied and fun rules perspective. Uh, Cruel Boys. Mm, I almost said Fire Slayers, but I don't... I think Fire Slayers is close. They're closer than I think. Um, what are the worst? Slanesh, to me, is the worst in the whole game. I, I think Slanesh is the farthest from fun of any army. And the farthest from the flavor, and just weird. They never got it right, I don't think. So Slanesh is number one. After that, Cruel Boys, probably. Um, they got an idea, it's just the follow-through is support on it. Um, who else? Corn. I don't know. It depends on what you want. If you want tactical gameplay, corn is great. Um, a lot of people don't want tactical gameplay. They want just, you know, just run forward and fight, you know, like hero hammer kind of thing. And so if you want that, yeah, but it kind of depends. And it's had this tactical kind of gameplay thing for the entire lifetime of all of AOS. It seems like they really do want Korn the God to be kind of a tactical war god. And it looks like a stupid just her chainsaws and stuff, but actually it's King of the Hill kind of tactical, and that's fine. What you immediately think of is what Iron Jaws play like, you know. But maybe people just have to get in their head that that's not what it is. Tactical War God, but no shooting? Yeah, okay, I didn't say he was smart. I said he was tactical. No shooting, the best thing to ever be doing in all of history. All right. Superior range. No magic for no reason. Anyway, um, yeah, I would say Slanesh is number one for me, for sure. After that, Cruel Boys, probably. The one-two punch. Uh, Zinch is probably third. Zinch is up there. Maybe they could make Behemoth a little more interesting. Yeah, Behemoth needs a lot. Sons of Behemoth needs a lot of work, I think. Slanesh gets rewritten every edition, and it's always bad, yeah. Not bad, like, there... Slanesh has been way too strong and way too weak. They're, they're flopping all over the place. We're not talking about power level. It's just like Slanesh is always, like, weird, doesn't fit the flavor very well, kind of all over the place, just, just a miss, and a lot of times not really that fun. However you want to define that. I know it's kind of tricky, too. Yeah, Slanesh for sure. Cruel Boys, Zinch. 
Night Haunt, I would have said before reading this, which is a little tighter than it used to be. Mega Gargans, maybe. Yeah, it's a, that's an interesting thing to think about and talk through. Lumineth, I would have said so as well. I thought Lumineth was just off on most of their rolls. Not weak, not even not fun, just Lumineth was... I didn't... I mostly didn't agree with how any of it worked out. I'm like, that doesn't seem right. Doesn't seem that fun. But we'll see what they do with it, you now moving forward. <laughs> 